Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Hindu Sex Aliens by Larry Wiener. So Larry Wiener is an indie author, this is actually the third book in a series, in a trilogy in fact, and it's called the Island Trilogy. I'm going to kind of bring you up to date with where, where we are with book three very quickly and then we'll take a look at that one. So the first book in this series is Paradise Rot, and then the second book is Once Again with Blood. And basically these are almost kind of comedy horror novels I guess. So the idea here is we follow a guy called uh, Kyle Brightman who is a former ad exec and Larry Wiener himself is also a former ad exec. He used to work in marketing agencies and uh, so did I as it goes. So I think that's one of the reasons why I find it quite approachable. In each of these different books Kyle and his team are charged with creating an advertising campaign to bring people to one of these islands except obviously as you can guess from the title not everything as it seems. So in the first book Paradise Rot uh, a bunch of people go to the island and then it turns out there are zombies everywhere and then once again with blood is about vampires as you might imagine with Hindu sex aliens this is about Hindu sex aliens I'm gonna read you the blurb and then I'm gonna take you through some of my thoughts on it so the band's getting back together once more but this time nobody's feeling it the bicker gang of paradise rot and once again with blood is rapidly losing its taste for luring clueless middle americans to obscure tropical island resorts not to mention unwittingly luring them into the clutches of the local ancient undead or having to rescue said morons from said blood slurpers and flesh snackers but here they are Kate Hendricks and fellow ad creative slash nut job slash horn dog Kyle Brightman chief among them on the indian ocean island of Soma Indra putting together another first-rate ad campaign, pulling together another train wreck assortment of guests, burnt out suburban housewives who are semi-sick of men and seeking sisterhood through yoga sessions, socially inept software engineers who may or may not be aliens looking to screw their way to species perpetuation. Oh, and did we mention the thousands of Hindu deities looking to rewrite the Karma Sutra during their annual R&R &R retreat? Now, if I was struggling to read that, that's because on the back, the blurb is this awful hybrid of, like, green text on orange. I'm not sure why. I, I always thought this, this, this cover is stunning for the first book, and then the next cover is kind of okay. And then I really do not like this cover at all. But then I don't like glossy covers. But don't let the cover fool you. It is, uh, I, I, did, I did enjoy this. It made me laugh a lot. So in the first two books, it is much more of what you would just call almost a, like I say, a comic horror. Maybe almost a fantasy elements and a kind of adventure story all thrown in. Whereas this book gets really meta. It gets really weird. Like the first two are weird, but they're like... They're also kind of a little more conventional than this. This, uh, I, I wrote in my review for my blog site, this takes the writing rule book and just sets fire to it and Wiener just does whatever the hell he wants. To give you a bit of an example of the kind of weirdness of this story, uh, I'm gonna read you part of this scene. This is, well, let me just go straight into it. Tammy Fujihara was in the snacks section of Trader Joe's when the Zerditians beamed her up. One moment she had just picked up a bag of seasoned kale chips, the next she stood in the middle of a dome-shaped chamber where seven Zutidians sat on small white exercise balls, bouncing slightly, their short legs tipping the balls from one foot to the other. To Tammy, the Zutidians resembled sharp A's, their faces covered with folds of skin. They wore extremely baggy pants. <laughs> Tammy exclaimed. She pulled the bag of kale chips to her chest. This isn't Trader Joe's. Where am I? I'm hallucinating. Low blood sugar. Hyperglycemia. I need some candy. I don't feel right. How did you know my name? I need to sit down. I'm sorry that this is such a shock to you, Dr. Zgv continued. I know if the roles were reversed, I'd feel the same way. Nonetheless, here you are. Where's that? Tammy asked. Zrd, Dr. Zgv said. Sounds Croatian, Tammy said. Am I in Croatia? You're not. You're far from Earth. We brought you here because we need to conduct a few experiments. You're not getting anywhere near me with an anal probe, Tammy said. Why does everybody automatically go there? Dr. Lujuk asked. Always. We won't be using any devices on you, Dr. Zgv assured. In fact, we're hoping you find the experience pleasurable. We'd like you to engage in coitus with one of our kind, Tammy Fujihara. Uh, what? Have sex with one of us, Dr. Lujuk said. Tammy looked at the Zertidians and she didn't like what she saw when it came to the sex talk. Bring in the test subject, Dr. Lujic said. 
A door slid open and in walked a Zodidian who looked just like the others. This ain't gonna happen, Tammy said, and if that guy comes near me, I'll kick his balls up to his tonsils. I can do it too. I've had self-defense training at the Y. Dr. Zagov nodded. We wouldn't want you to do anything against your will. He motioned to the Zotidian who entered the room. A moment later, the Zotidian's robe slid down to his knees and a penis of approximately 18 inches unraveled. Okay, I have a few conditions, Tamafujahara said. So that's an introduction to the sex aliens. If you're afraid of like sex in books, you won't like this, as you can probably guess from the title. But equally, it's not like gratuitous sex everywhere. Like, it does happen. There's actually an orgy at one point, but it it's not like erotica or something like that, and you know, it's 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 funny. <laughs> it's funny sex. What was funny actually is I noticed a few things where this was kind of dated specific to a specific point in time as well. So for example, uh, Dory was talking about Hindu deities using Facebook and someone replies, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus, Tumblr, Pinterest, Vine, email as well. However, obviously Vine is now dead. What I do like is the idea of they actually use um, they use meditation as a way to advertise to people to bring them to this island. So when people are meditating, they can receive advertisements. And I think that's quite funny the way that's done. You will take a lot more from this book and this series as a whole if, you, if you've got experience of working in marketing, because there are a lot of in-jokes and jokes about uh, how agencies work and all that kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed it for that reason. Another thing that kind of dates it is he's talking about zombies at this point, actually. So this, this is the one thing in our lives that you decide is pure fiction. Zombies, vampires, zombie vampires, talking dogs, brains eaten, blood drained. Oh, I forgot the Catholic saints. Catholic saints who descended from heaven and cussed like sailors. John Bon Jovi and the Prime Minister of England. What's his name? Cameron, David Cameron. David Cameron, Prime Minister of England is a zombie. So is Chris Christie. The list is longer for vampires. Chloe Kardashian, Eli Manning, he's actually a zombie vampire, whatever, Tolkien, Tolkien's a vampire for fuck's sakes, so where's the second Lord of the Rings, huh, he's got nothing but time, that actually covers quite a lot of ground that happened in the first two books, but equally it does date it because David Cameron is no longer Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, he did this really silly thing where he called for a referendum about whether the United Kingdom should leave the EU, and then for some reason, we voted to leave, and he resigned, which kind of had to. Also, what gets very meta here is that Larry Weiner himself is a character. He's actually come to visit the island to kind of see what happens. So he's he, he's he's been writing this book and he's hit a roadblock. So he wants to come along and meet all of his characters to see what happens next. So here's his introduction. I'm Larry Weiner, the author of Paradise Rock, once again with blood, and this third novel, which I've titled Hindu Sex Aliens. Though I've got to tell you, I'm this close to giving the whole alien thing the axe. That's why I'm here with Kurt, who's up in the room. Delightfully snarky response as well. When one of the characters meets him, he says, Never heard of you. Let me guess, self-published? Wiener was actually published originally by Booktrope Publishing, who published my books, but he's now published by 818 Press, apparently. At this point, the actual storyline gets very bizarre. You'll notice that I'm kind of picking up isolated incidents throughout this rather than trying to describe the storyline as a whole, and that's because it's very difficult. Basically, a bunch of women go to this island for a, a yoga retreat, then the Hindu uh, gods come down and basically create the right conditions for an orgy. Meanwhile, the sex aliens are coming down because they want to uh, impregnate women. There are also some HP engineers from an alternate reality who come into our reality because the women in their reality are infertile. It's very convoluted, but it kind of works in a weird way. But it's also, it's very much like, I don't know, an acid trip or something like that. It's a very weird, weird book. <laughs> So I think that's all I'm going to mention for this one because I don't want this review to be super long. Just suffice to say that this is a very, very strange book. Um, I wouldn't recommend starting with this one anyway because obviously it is the third in the trilogy. So I would go out and pick up Paradise Rot if uh, what I've been saying to you sounds interesting. Paradise Rot definitely follows more of a traditional storyline as opposed to <laughs> Hindu sex aliens. It, it didn't really end. It sort of, it almost petered out. 
But again, it, it kind of worked in a very strange way that's very hard for me to define. I'm not even sure if this review is any good or if it makes sense. However, I did very much enjoy it. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I thought it was pretty good, especially for a uh, self-published book or for an indie press. Sorry, uh, rather than self-published, it is an indie publisher that came out with this and it has been edited and, and all this stuff. But it, it was very, experiment very experimental and very weird, but it kind of worked. And uh, yeah, I think this whole trilogy, if you're looking for uh, kind of quirky indie books that just take the piss out of things, really then uh, check out this trilogy. So anyway, that's about it for this review. Please be sure to let me know with a comment if Hindu sex aliens sounds like something of interest, or equally, once again, with blood or paradise rot. And in the meantime, please do hit subscribe for more bookish videos, and I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye.